There are three main drainage problems that you need to be thinking about. Um, it could be, do you have a problem with groundwater? You'll see that next rivers or next to the coast. Uh, and that's a rising water table. And there, we're thinking about the deeper the drain, the better, because you're trying to control that water table and bring it down. But the, the, the big problem you have there is that quite often you're facing a tide, a rising tide. So that dictates your, the level of drains that you can actually put in. You could be unlucky and have a problem with springs. Uh, springs are very common up in the Aberdeen area, less so down in the west. Uh, and here, the important thing to do is actually dig down and find out where the spring is rising. And in some cases, I've suggested the farmer to actually take a six inch concrete pipe or plastic pipe and actually cap on top of the spring. I was at a talk recently and a contractor came up and he said, yeah, that makes good sense because he says, I've been back three times in the same field for the last three years and the springs keep moving. So you have to cap springs. And the last one that's most common, it's the one that the majority of Scotland, or Scottish farmers will face, is dealing with surface water. And we're thinking of the, the heavy impermeable soil we've got, or less per slowly permeable soil we've got, the glacial till that's come down through. And we might have a reasonably free draining topsoil, but then it hits that slowly permeable subsoil. And that's, it begins to back up through the topsoil. And that's the one where we're trying to actually need to think about using gravel gravel backfill and bring it up to the base of the topsoil to give an easy connection back down through the, back to the drain. If you're unlucky, you might find all three problems in the same field, but the first thing is just to check and decide what problem I'm actually looking to deal with. If money's tight, which it is on a lot of farms, what should, where should you prioritise? And I always say, um, avoid peat soils, unless you're Irish. Uh, they're the hardest soils to drain because they've got the lowest hydraulic conductivity. The water will move very, very slowly through, through peat. It's probably not a good thing to be thinking about drying out too much peat if we think about the carbon footprint situation. So peat soils probably leave, leave well alone. Uh, so I'm focusing more on the mineral soils. I'm avoiding all the difficult sites. If I know I'm going to have problems with running sand or ochre, is that the first place I'm going to go and try and drain a bit? Um, if I've got a field that was drained in the early 80s and the rushes are come back into it again, there's obviously something, um, the drains are maybe not working the way they should have been. A lot of drainage was put in at that time without gravel backfill, but they were backfilled just with soil and that soil has maybe come together so we no longer have the clear root way for the water to get through. So how would I rejuvenate that? And I would start off with thinking, right, okay, can I put a ditch across the top of the field and gather any water or a, a gravel drain and then split it as I come down and it might be quite wide spacing every 20 or 30 metres if need be because at this point you need to think what purpose if it's a silage field you can afford to spend a bit more if you're grazing dairy cows you can afford to spend a bit more but if it's beef and sheep um, in the west coast area I think a few drains well placed might be enough to get rid of that really uh, majority of surface water that's coming to run down the field. So when I'm trying to plan the work or prepare for the work that I might be doing next summer, some of the things I'll be going through my mind will be um, where's that actual, where's the, where's the wet spots in the field? There's, no, no, there's not a problem in actually going out and marking um, where the wet bits are in the field um, and then begin to plan how you're going to actually uh, sort those problems. It'd be a good idea to also ask about and decide are you going to use a drainage contractor or are you going to tackle the work yourself? Have you the experience to do that? If you have a digger in the farm you might be inclined to opt to, to do it yourself um, which isn't a problem but you need to be confident that you know what it is you're actually tackling. Um, and I think again, something as simple as size a bucket so you don't waste gravel. Um, I always say to farmers, don't use a man that can just simply drive a digger. It should really be somebody that knows a wee bit about actually working with drains. 
So you, that's preparation. Who am I going to get to do the job? You can ask it, ask about, find out from your neighbours if there's been anybody in doing drainage on their farms, similar type of soil, and begin to actually trace them for work in the summertime because they'll be busy with maybe one of other civil engineering jobs as well. If you were to break it down, the likes of your twin wall pipe is probably going to cost you something in the region of £2 a metre. Um, actually getting somebody in a digger to dig the, 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 the drain is probably another pound a metre. Um, on top of that, we'll be getting somebody in to actually lay the pipe, but that could be yourself, so you could save a bit of money there, under maybe good guidance from the man in the digger. And then of course the cost of the gravel, it could be um, anything from a quarter a tonne to a third of a tonne, at 18 pound a tonne, is probably another four, five, six pounds a tonne. Um, once you've decided and done all that and prioritise where you're going to spend that money, you can go at it each year. But don't be frightened to be patient. Um, I mentioned there, I've seen fields where we couldn't drive in with a digger, but what we could do was go in and clean out the ditch. And the next summer we went in and then um, created one or two channels and we begin to be able then to go and actually drain. Um, so be patient whenever you start a job. Don't be frightened to go and ask for advice. Uh, be that from drainage contractors, be that from local neighbours, uh, be it even from the college. We do have one or two advisors who are now um, skilled in giving drainage advice. A lot of people think we should just go in, drain, reseed the next year or that year. I would actually say go in, drain, let it settle um, and be prepared then the following year to go back in and do your reseeding then. Um, and that gives you the opportunity if there's any other spouty bits that you've missed, you'll still see those um, and you can go in and you're not disturbing a newly reseeded field. So patience is important. But you're looking, in Ireland we talk about draining once and it's what I've tried to get our farmers over here to think about, you drain, do, do a job once but do it right. And if you remember, most schemes you're doing that, it's going to last 40 years. If it's been right, there's no reason why it shouldn't last at least 40 years.